Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, hello and welcome to Linux Lads. We are the Linux Lads. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And before we begin, because Jake, our editor, cannot be here, why doesn't everyone say hello to Jake? One, two, three. I'm, you know, I'm sure you'll like that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he couldn't be here, so we wanted to give him a little bit of a, a little bit of kudos as well, because uh, he works very hard on the podcast. So, for those who don't know who we are, I'll just give a kind of a brief introduction. Um, we are the Linux Lads. We're a podcast. We're based in Dublin and and North Carolina. Uh, <laughs> in the US. <laughs> um, yeah, we have been doing this for five years. Um, I won't go in too much into the history because we talked about that last year and <laughs> nobody needs to hear that all again. So um, this time around, we're going to be talking about our, just our experiences uh, here at the summit and just in general at FOSS events and, you know, what talks we liked, you know, just the general scene of going to these events. like And how drunk we got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like um, last year we went through the kind of the history of our podcast and what we you know, how we use open source tools to make the podcast and, you know, to show that you can have like an entirely open source workflow for your podcast. Um, so this year we're going to change tack a little bit and talk about like attending these events and what we liked about this weekend and everything. So uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to my fellow co-hosts first of all. Um, who wants to go first? <laughs> well, why don't we uh, first introduce ourselves, say our names. So uh, Shane over there, Amalit is over there. And that's Mike, and I'm Connor. Thank you for remembering that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I'm. I'm going to go to you first. What What was? Uh, well, let's not say favorite, but what was one talk that kind of stood out to you this weekend? One of them that stood out to me was the DreamWorks talk. I didn't expect it to be as fascinating as it was. I thought it would be bogged down with a lot of technical information. Yeah, I but agree. Yeah, the the speaker really condensed those sections and sort of glossed over them and move to the interesting stuff really quickly. And I like that a lot. Yeah, it's always, it's always the case when I come to these events. Like People say that, that like they're f the best talk they went to is the one I, I never went to. Like. <laughs> <laughs> also, the best talk though that I went to was the one immediately before this, which was the Izahi talk. It was really good. Oh, okay. Yeah, again, didn't go to it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what about you? Well, I, th I can't pinpoint the best, but what stands out for exactly the same reason as... Uh, I'm only said about the DreamWorks, like I liked the talk about the word that escapes me is basically desktop portals, yes, portals, uh, which is, um, you know, the, the speaker, uh, Georges, I think his name is, uh, he made it super interesting and it's a really dry technical subject, but he made a really interesting presentation, really explained it well. And, uh, and uh, there were other things from that, like I, I liked uh, Gabe's talk about Oncast, not being a podcaster, you know, uh, oh, sorry, I'm playing a podcast, podcaster, but not being an actual videocaster. Again, interesting, uh, made approachable. Uh, obviously, I like the Asahi talk uh, because I'm a big fan. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there are, there are many good talks, but I think one of the underlying principles of uh, of a good talk at a Ubuntu summit is how to make something which is very dry and technical in many cases, how to make it approachable, how to explain it, even you know, even to audience that knows about it, uh, how to make it fun. And that's a real art. So I think some of the speakers really did well. On that vein, I will just like to say that uh, one that's really surprised me, I thought it was going to be very dry and technical, turned out to be really entertaining, was the uh, latex or types talk. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if he's here, but um, yeah, very much, very much enjoyed that. Yeah, the, the, the slide deck was kind of done in the style of like, uh, like your experience on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I definitely recommend checking that one out afterwards. Um, these are the alternatives do you want to swipe left or swipe right <laughs> so which one would be your favorite chain or maybe not favorite but which ones stood out to you um i'm actually like blanking now I, I it's on the tip of my tongue but like yeah i'm actually completely blanking on like which talk that 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 like there's one specific one and i just cannot rem oh yeah sorry it was actually uh philippe's talk on uh on oh yeah sorry thank you jim <laughs> um i was 
and the uh, the mod dwarf and how how it was created uh, like a standalone effects pedal because I'm a big music nerd so I, l I love all the stuff um, I can't play guitar to save my life but <laughs> I like all the technology that goes around the music um, so I'm the kind of guy who buys way too much music gear and doesn't know how to use half of it so <laughs> because I like how it looks <laughs> uh, this part this segment is sponsored by Toman <laughs> We might actually have to cut that out. <laughs> uh, I was being facetious in case anyone <laughs> didn't realize. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. If it, if it, if it, like, if, if it's like colorful and it makes cool sounds and has nice shiny, like, colorful lights on it, I'll probably, I'll probably, probably be interested in it. <laughs> so, let's talk about something else. So, we're at Ubuntu Summit, but obviously, all four of us are pretty seasoned um, conference goers, if you like. Um, well, we are. Don't look at me like that, Mike. <laughs> uh, except for last year, where I wasn't here. Yeah, well, fortunately, Connor didn't get to come last year. But um, also, all four of us are here. Woo! Oh yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the first time we are all physically in the same space. Yes, it's true. Yeah, that's true. I met Shane and Connor last year, or Shane and Mike last year. This is the first time I've ever seen Connor in person. Yeah. Yeah, so, so that's nice. And did it live up to the hype? <laughs> yes. It's awesome meeting you. <laughs> nice to um, meet you too. So, Amleth, I'm going to go to you. Um, what conferences like have you gone to apart from Ubuntu Summit? And kind of how would you compare them to Ubuntu Summit? Well, the other conference I've been to is Southeast Linux Fest. It's really just these two. Um, in my experience, Southeast Linux Fest has been pretty okay. But I would have to say the Ubuntu Summit stands out because of the community. It's really extremely welcoming and friendly to everyone. I, I concur, I concur. Yeah. Um, Shane, Shane, I think you described it as, and I'm conveniently wearing an OGCAMP t-shirt, it's like OGCAMP, but like multi or up by intensity of about two or three. So I very much enjoyed OGCAMP, and I don't know if there's going to be another one, but uh, OGCAMP was, was great and had that kind of community feel. But there's like that but more intense so there's very much a community feel here as well which i very much enjoyed yeah uh, personally like i started going my first one i ever went to was fosdem i actually would go to fosdem like uh, every year uh, for like five years at once one stage and this is actually kind of I w before i met all you guys actually i was like i didn't know anybody who was into like linux and open source so i would just kind of i would just go to brussels every january on my own so you're, you're a FOSDEM groupie is what you're saying? Yeah, but uh, it's quite a, it's a big conference. Like, there's a lot going on there. So, I, I, you know, the crowd started to stress me out too much. So <laughs> um, I stopped going. But yeah, you're right. OGCAMP is great because it's, it's very informal and uh, you can just rock up on the day and just like put like a little post-it on the board of a talk you just came up with the night before if you want. It's not like Ubuntu Summit, which is a lot more scheduled. OGCAMP uh, is... Um, is a lot more kind of like informal and community focused. I don't know if they use the term, but did they say an, like an unconference or something like that? Unconference, yeah. yeah, which is actually a really cool word. I like that. Um, but yeah, I've gone to FOSDEM. I've gone to Og Camp several times. Um, I did also. Uh, <laughs> I did also go to. Um, there was like a once-off thing in Belfast before, but I don't know if it like continued. Um, it was called Belfast. Um, so that was really that was qu that was quite cool, but that was a lot smaller than this. You know, it was just like one one day of talks, and there was one track of talks, and that was it. So it was quite quite a bit smaller. Um, Mike, well, I think I've been pretty much to the same conferences as Connor because I've uh, I've except for uh, yeah no actually we all been uh, well as we've been to. Fos Talk Live, does it count as a conference? Probably not. That's more like a performance kind of thing and pub meetup. Yeah, yeah, that was like a, a live show, kind of like this, but like with podcasts that are better at what they do. <laughs> and, and way more alcohol, supposedly. <laughs> and I, I did like Ocamp. Uh I think that you want to sum it as a more of a team, not necessarily the distro, because there's two, you know, millions other projects. If I kind of some, if I were to sum up both OCAMP and this, which is like the only things I can really compare against each other, is uh, OCAMP is more like free culture anything, software or anything, and it's cool. And uh, this is more, I think, kind of community related, you know, even even to the point of 
community slash work. Like, if you want to achieve anything in this space, you have to uh, grab other people. And I think that's that's from all the talks that I come to. This is uh, this is what I uh, what I uh, kind of took away because there was not a single talk I think that would be like, yeah, I'm the one person who does this by all by myself, single proprietor, single developer of anything. Everything is like, yeah, I have a cool project supported by all of these people and uh, please have a look and join us, uh, I, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think the, the, the thing about Ubuntu Summit as well is that the team behind it, like they, re they really pull out all the stops for this one. I, like I, I haven't seen a conference that has been so like well managed, you know? Uh, that's not to throw shade at other conferences, obviously, but like, um, yeah, it's just the, t the team, like they, they, they really pull out all the stops for this. And like last year kind of blew me away with all the different social events and stuff that were going on. And, and yeah, I'm pretty tired today, so I don't know how long I'm gonna last in the after party tonight, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's my first one attending one of these, so you guys have set a very high bar, and all, that's all I'm saying. But yeah, I, I would like to concur with all of those. Also, like the, the, the informality of nature of it. I mean, not that I was, I was necessarily expecting this, but there are definitely other conferences where it's all very serious and suit and tie and uh, it's all business, 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 business. Here, no, it's, it's everyone's so friendly. You can go up to a person and introduce yourself to, uh, and I'm extending that out to other people as well. If you spot me in the, bar, in the, in the part, l party later on and you want to come up to me and say hi, feel free to do so. Um, I thought you were going to say spot me in the park. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it's, it's far too cold outside for that. <laughs> um, have, we, have we officially run out of steam or will we open it up to the audience or does anyone else have any other comments? I mean, no, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, generally good vibes. So, yeah. yeah. There was, when you suggested that we talk about things that we've been through, so I kind of ran through my head and through the talks. Mm. There was one realization that I took from the panel in the morning on the AI and there was, um, I think, six very smart people on the podium mm. and from the conversation was obviously very erudite i realized that you could probably kind of put any people in this space on that podium and uh it would the, the, the conversation would be pretty much the same which basically leads me that uh, and this is completely unrelated to any subject matter of this podcast or anything as, as I'm, I'm just going on a tangent but Nobody really knows anything about AI. Nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows what it's doing. And we are all just guessing at this point. And that was made obvious to me by the panel because I was thinking, well, that just could be like you three there and you still get the same answers. Uh, mm. I think, I hope I'm not offending anybody, but you know, it's, it, it was an interesting realization. If, if anything, you're putting us in a, in esteemed company. You're saying there's here three experts in a, a, AI, and you're like, it, it could have been you three guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. No, but I, I I get what you're saying though. It's uh, it's like everyone here is is good at something. You know, everyone here like is is a curious person, and you can you can grab literally anyone from the crowd here and you can have an interesting conversation about something like I've been talking to other people about this that's what I love about these conferences is the the hallway track as they call it so that's that's really what it's all about like for me um if I don't go to a single talk as long as I can just you know have a little chit chat with, with with a bunch of nerds for for a weekend that's that's awesome like I'm really good I'm good with that I mean the, the hallway track is fantastic there's apple pie and everything <laughs> uh, on that on that vein, I mean, there's as I said, there's so many interesting people uh, here that pretty much all of you are invited on to be, appear and guests on our podcast because you're all interesting people. So show at linuxclass.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're, this, is, it, this is where we harvest guests for the next year <laughs> at the conference. You know? but, uh, we don't harvest people. <laughs> no, we're, we're more organic farmers. <laughs> um. So I've officially run out of things to say. So I'm gonna I'm gonna open it up to the floor. If anyone wants to like ask a question or give a suggestion, anything you like. I'd just like to say that uh, the Canonical team definitely deserves a shout out for up in their game this year. We talked a lot about the conference being good, and it is. But I think it's equally important to note that there's been significant year on year improvement. And I, for one, am here for it and want to make sure the Canonical team knows that we noticed. Thanks. Yep, here, here. 
So I'm with Canonical, and thank you very much for everybody being here today. Uh, I can tell you it's my first uh, Ubuntu Summit myself. I mean, it's definitely a different vibe. It's not like within the company, it's not good, but I did sense a love, you know, like people being accepting. For me, you know, like when my wife announced, like, I have a job at Ubuntu, she was like, who Ubuntu? Because she's, you know, like a, um, a developer herself. Uh, you know what? It's special. It's just special. I'm going to leave it at that. But, um, you know, like I will also make sure that uh, the A team understand that uh, what has been said here today, because that's true. They are doing a, a fantastic job. So, look, thank you again for coming. Again, here, here. One of the things that I noticed is there is a certain amount of energy and efficacy that comes with being in the same room. Like you can communicate with somebody over chat and over email and through collaboration on GitLab GitHub, but it's just different when you can be inside of the same room. And multiple times throughout the weekend, I would see or experience firsthand where I had a problem with a particular device and I was looking for some code to fix it. And I was able to go to the project maintainer who was here, tap him on the shoulder and said, hey, can I get a copy of that? 30 seconds later, it's sitting in an IM and I have access to that code and I'm able to fix my problem. And that level of community engagement, being able to put faces to names, I think we all have a pretty decent ability to work remotely and to build relationships remotely, but it's just better in person. I've, I've very much noticed that. I've attended talks and the the uh, the speaker would say, hey, I'm, I'm struggling with such and such a thing. And then somebody in the audience is going, hey, I work on that team. I, we, like we can talk afterwards and I can help you out with that. Yeah, like uh, that's happened to me so many times where I've been in a talk or or just mentioned something just out in the hallway and I'll get a tap on the shoulder and be like, oh, yeah, I'm the maintainer of that project. Have you any feature requests? You know, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's kind of mind blowing. Uh, yeah. How close to, to, to these um, projects you get. And like, it sounds a bit silly, but like I, I kind of get starstruck. You know, <laughs> even though it's someone making software, it's not the same thing as a, like an actor or a musician or something. But I still sort of get get that, you know, and even other podcasters as well that I've listened to. It's like I still sort of get that. Ooh, they're they're really here, you know, <laughs> like they're a real person. They're 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 not just a floating um, like voice in your head that you've been listening to for several years. You're an actual person. <gasps> <laughs> I want to emphasize something Noah said. Putting faces to names has been fantastic. Because I, I apparently know a lot of people who are here, but I don't know what they look like. Mm. And it's, it's been a great experience actually meeting people face to face that I've been interacting with for sometimes years exclusively online. That, uh, yeah, that has happened. Yeah, yeah. That has happen, happened to me more than once where I was talking to someone like in, in the bar afterwards or something and only then realized like 20 minutes in that they had been on the podcast before or something, you know, like <laughs> things like that, you know. <laughs> Please don't mention any names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's just because like, and I think people sound different in real life than they do on like on a Jitsi call. I think that's what it is too. Sometimes it, it depends on the person. Some people sound yeah. exactly the same in real life, mm. and you just know who they are by their voice. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a question over here. I would also like to circle back to the putting faces next to the names and the voices that I often meet with, uh, like grumpy users that uh, don't like, really get all the decisions that are being made. Uh, and uh, I always uh, tell them that, you know, you might not agree with them, but if you actually meet the um, people that are making those decisions and uh, listen to their reasons and um, explanation, it uh, really helps you with uh, accepting that, you know, it's not just uh, a project that's meant for you. You may not uh, agree with everything, but it still is uh, great for the whole community. It's much harder to be an angry internet person without the internet. Yep. And also another thing for in-person meetings, one often inspires people to do something. For, for example, on the last Guadec, we had a keynote by Manuel Haro, and he talked about organizing conferences in Mexico and so. He's, in, he's located in Mexico. And he 
he shortly mentioned the Linux App Summit, and afterwards I walked up to him and talked to him why not he applies for the location of the app summit and he found it a good idea but he had not idea of the exact place but there was also jesus soto uh, uh from mexico in, in on the conference the next day they met and jesus offered his university where he studied as the location and they applied and they won the 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 call for locations and so the linux app summit 2024 will take place in mexico that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's um it's an interesting exercise in civility because there are definitely some um, projects or even companies represented here that don't get a uh, 100% positive feedback when you read about them on Reddit, for example. But here, I think part of it is face-to-face, -face, part of it is uh, because because everybody here is um, kind of maybe invited or, you know, every, everybody here seems to be very civil. So all the interactions, even around people that you might necessar not necessarily agree with, was extremely civil and polite and friendly in my experience. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's like, I, I, I you know, I have a, a opinions and preferences like everyone else, and and you know, I might, I might hate some software, like really hate it, <laughs> but then, but then you meet the developer, and they're a nice person, and it's like, well, well I can't hate it now. <laughs> and does anyone else have any questions? Or it doesn't even have to be a question. It can just be like, whatever you want to say. What is the most unexpected thing that you have found here? Oh, well, that's a great question. Whoa. Um, I'm going to hand that over to one of these guys because I'm, I'm trying to think of something. I'm trying to think oh, too. I'm also trying to think. Yeah, that's a good question though. I'm sure Very there's, good question. Yeah, I'm sure there's been... It's a thinker. Yeah, I'm sure there's been stuff like that. Um, I can answer this question <laughs> from my side. Go ahead, please save yeah, us. <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for me, it was really exciting that uh, a lot of people uh, here are really not just end users, but are developers and creating by themselves their products and... Yeah, because on FOSDEM, it's more like the user conference. And here, like any person you come, they have their own company. They like share, can share struggles about open source, about that uh, if you put your code on GitHub, it still doesn't mean that someone will like help you and <laughs> contribute to it. <laughs> yeah, so this... This was unexpected for me that it's more like uh, not user conference, but developer. And yeah, hmm. a lot a lot of great people here. Yeah, agreed. I, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the, the origins of this, what it used to be called the Ubuntu developer so much. Now it's just the, so I think they're opening it up to more community and uh, air quotes, regular users. Yeah, exactly. It, it kind of, you, you sort of realize that there's a lot that goes into all this stuff it's not just about writing code and you know distros and stuff like that it's it's there's a whole ton of other things that need to happen there so it's uh like for instance uh, to go back to the talks um i was actually at graham's talk um just before this and uh he was talking about technical writing and how to how to write documentation well and you know some tips for writing documentation and it's like well there you go that's like an entirely different discipline to writing code you know it's it, and, it, and it's just as essential exactly yeah because like you can write the best code in the world but if the documentation is non-existent then nobody's going to know how to use it so yeah documentation is key okay. so the, the unexpected thing right so i they are all there were i think a few for me and they were all kind of unexpected specifically towards the project like i've never realized um how much how much anti um how would you phrase it? Basically, with the Fairphone people. So there was a talk about uh, from one of the Fairphone employees talking about a lot of the aspects of making a repairable uh, phone and uh, selling it to people. I never realized how much of the actual running a business orthodoxy they have to break in order to do what they want to do. And obviously, they are. Uh, and there were a few other projects, I think, very much guided by the principles and the fact that they 
can thrive in, in an environment where the orthodoxy is, well, no, you first make money out as much as possible by all means possible, and they can actually manage, you know, uh, manage to uh, do pretty much the opposite of any sane uh, business advice would be and still be successful. That was a massive surprise to me. Yeah, I, I feel an anti-capitalist rant coming on here. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to. We only have about 30 minutes. No, so you, you know me, I love my anti-capitalist rants. Um, it's, uh, so no, please save us from the anti-capitalist <laughs> rant. <laughs> um, no, it's, yeah, that's, that's another thing that stuck out to me here is that y you can have a project and you can make money from it if you want, but that's pretty much never what people talk about here. People just don't really talk about money. I mean, yes, we talk about funding for projects, but that's only so that the project can happen. It's it's not really about making money, and that's actually like super refreshing, because it feels like, like you said, if you want to do something good in the world, um, and you want to actually make a successful product that improves the world somehow, you almost have to like do yourself out of some profit, like, and you have to kind of go against the rules of, of business, like you said. Um, so it's 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 weird, but I feel like those two things can coexist. Like you can make money and be paid for your work, but you know you you can also just do it because you love doing it and because you think it's a good thing to do for the world. What I'm taking away from it, you can make money, but you choose. You know, if you if you were a hundred percent greedy monopolist, and you were to choose a boundary bit, or you were to choose a balance between uh, doing maybe what your conscience tells you and making money, then it would be very one-sided. You'd be at the extreme of that conversation, of that internal conversation, right? You'd be at the, the very, I just want to make money thing. That obviously, I don't think this exists in the world, but that's the extreme example. Whereas, and it's all about the spectrum where the where the people who make these decisions put that slider, you know, where, where, where they, how, how, they talk, uh, how, how they place it, right? So a, a few projects, uh, and this is a bit of a problem in open source, I think, basically slide the slider all the way to the zero, or to the left, and say, money is too complicated, and it brings too much drama to deal with, so we just don't want to want, don't want to have anything with money, and we'll just do it for the love of doing it, and which is fine, right? Uh, if you want to make a project sustainable, and I think that's kind of assumed and true, you probably want to find that you need some money. This is this is talked about like a lot in 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 in, in this whole uh, world, you know, um, this little universe of ours. Um, it's yeah, it's like how do you solve that problem? Um, of like funding for, for open source projects like and how do you give something away like how do you give code away but then also make money from it you know it's 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 a, it's a problem and i've heard it mentioned on plenty of other podcasts like that how much of a problem it is i just want to um on on that vein uh there are some efforts there's no one answer to this but there's some efforts such as the uh, i don't know if people are aware of open collective where they they said oh we we kind of look after the the financial side but also it's, pu it's there it's public so if you're a public entity or if you're a, a non-profit um people can see oh all all your donations uh the the 10 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is or even large donations and also see what the project is spending the money on so it's all out there in the open so uh, but i believe p people have questions so go ahead well, i just want to say i think there's an important distinction to make when we start talking about the money and like you know the differences and one of those really important distinctions is the distinction between somebody who sings for money and somebody who sells recordings of their songs for money once you get into the business of selling recordings that, that's very different because now you're saying, I want to get paid forever for the thing I did last year, as opposed to like, hey, I just did this work I'd like to get paid for. That reminds me, actually, uh, just a brief aside. Uh, didn't we like, didn't we think about doing an April Fool's joke where we were going to like be really serious and pretend that we were releasing an episode as an NFT? Uh, well, <laughs> so we remember when uh, there was the virtual for Stoke Life when we had the presentation about. Uh, uh, us basically treating this as a marketing kind of uh, exercise and uh, talking about synergies across silos and that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. The presentation was in air quotes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a presentation. <laughs> there were slides and everything, right? Uh, so, yeah, I thought that could be a good continuation where we would basically just... But I think the joke has kind of... 
pass us by. You know, everybody knows that NFTs, except for Baltic, uh, Air Baltic. Air Baltic are still peddling NFTs. You can actually see it above you on the seat, above your seat. And this is a complete tangent. I don't even know why I'm speaking about this. But basically, there was like a little announcement that they are selling NFTs or you can earn NFTs and it's like like my, like air miles, that kind of thing. But anyway, I think the joke about NFTs is gone now and now everybody knows that was a scam. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the moment's passed. <laughs> Noah, did you want to ask something? Yes. Well, I do have a comment about what Jim said. So there's, he, he said there's a distinction between singing for money or let me phrase it differently. There's a difference between being paid to perform and being paid for past performances. One model would be like the company selling a, a past release of their software. And another one would be funding the work of a project maintainer that's working on like core components of common applications. And I think there's, they both have their place but personally, I, I believe funding the maintainer of the, the critical project is more critical than, than funding the, the end result, I guess, if that makes any kind of sense. Hmm. Yeah, I can agree with that. Because the critical component is used in a lot more than just the resulting product from other systems. I didn't word that very well. No, it made sense to me. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, we have a question. My question for you would be, what would you look at towards looking towards the future based on your experience here? What advice or what thoughts would you have for ways for the conference to improve next year? seems like we're all very happy and uh, we're all very thankful for the excellent work that was put, it, put into it this year. But are there areas of improvement? And if so, what are they? I would like to selfishly request that it's put in Dublin so we don't have to fly. <laughs> no, uh, it shouldn't be in Dublin because then we wouldn't get a trip. Everybody. Yeah, and it would be, that would be kind of boring. <laughs> if, I, if, I can do that, if I can take the darts to the conference, then yeah, no. Uh, at least Cork, I've never been. <laughs> yeah. No, but seriously? Um, uh, a conference in, Tor in Cork would be intolerable. But um, <laughs> does, it, does anyone want to answer that man's question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody? Uh, I'm always thinking about it. It's completely I'm perfect. I'm trying to think. So <laughs> w one thing potentially could be, it's a logistical matter, not necessarily doable, but having the all the attendees in the same hotel as the actual convention was extremely convenient last year, but I know that's not always doable. It depends on location very heavily. And it's just me being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like there's there's things where you can say, okay, this can be fixed by just booking a bigger hotel, which means a lot more money or something like that. And uh, but I don't know if there's anything that can be done on a kind of non logistical level. You know, uh, should it be longer? Should it be shorter? Should it, should there be more uh, more talks running consecutively? Fewer talks running consecutively? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. The, the only one, one upside of the the uh, us being all in a, put up in a separate hotel is our hotel then becomes the party hotel. Whoop whoop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a natural sort of like area for us to all gather afterwards. Yeah, um, and everyone walks through the doors coming coming in, so everyone spots everyone at the bar. <laughs> I have an improvement that we can do. So one of two options, either the Philippines or something else that's not freezing, or June. One of the two is great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think Amal has even noticed as he's walking around with a t-shirt and shorts on. I have a comment on that. Uh, I applaud the courage of Amelis on his uh, shoes choices, despite the location <laughs> and the time of the year. Uh, that was bold. For the, for the listeners at your, uh, at your appliances at home, uh, Amal is wearing a uh, uh, <laughs> ah, I'm too close to the microphone, apparently. Uh, Amolev is wearing shorts, uh, sandals, and uh, shorts, uh, shorts, not skirts, um, sleeves. Shorts and sandals. Shorts and sandals. And it's pretty much been like that for the entire conference. Yeah, I mean, I think he had long trousers on for one night. Um, for about 30 seconds. <laughs> on the other hand, you know, uh, this for us who live in Dublin, this is almost summer, so it's not too bad. It's because the buildings are really hot. Yes, it's cold outside, but once I get inside, I, I just start sweating. So I dress to be 
most comfortable in the worst setting. I think we have a question. So I think my question is connected. How did you like the Riga? <laughs> I love it. It's very nice. It's very chill here. Like it's it's very quiet and just very like yeah, it's not very crowded. There's not much traffic. I like that about a city when it's like big but also kind of quiet and and nice, you know. And the food here is really good actually. Uh, it's surprisingly good. I think we uh, ended up in the same restaurant three times and I ordered the same thing three times <laughs> and I was not disappointed. So so there is a place called Lido. Uh, we should get a discount there because uh, we've been there way too often. It's a lovely place. Uh, I we've, li- we've lived in that restaurant. Yes. Uh, we, uh, me, Connor, and my wife, who's uh, around somewhere, uh, we went to uh, for a walk in on Friday before, in Friday morning before uh, the summit started, and it's a lovely city. Uh, I keep comparing it to Prague because uh, I'm from thereabouts, and uh, you can see the similarities, but you can also see the uh, the unique things for me, or maybe I don't know, maybe everything in the Baltics looks the same, but I wouldn't know. But it's a really uh, you know, it's a really beautiful thing, a really beautiful place, lovely architecture, great food, um, you know, uh, and yeah. Yeah. I, I've not been here long long enough to know if it's authentic or not, but it, I was struck by how old the buildings look, that everything needs to be well preserved. So um, well, maybe it's just, maybe that's the, the building codes and newer buildings kind of look like that. I really wanted to explore the city more. But my sleep schedule has just been absolute crap. I woke up at, let's see, 8 o'clock. No, I went to sleep 8 o'clock in the morning yesterday. <laughs> and then 8 o'clock in the morning the day before. So I ended up missing a lot of the talks I wanted to see. And then I'd lay in bed at night, go, go, to, go to bed around 1 or 2 in the morning, something like that, and just lay there awake. <laughs> it was. It's not been great in terms of sleep. So but maybe there's a... There should be an alternative nighttime track for people. That would be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who can't, you know. For the who, jet lagged among us. Lagged. <laughs> yeah. I do have a suggestion for, uh, it, it's a minor thing. It's not exactly conference related, but I do have a suggestion for Canonical to make these better for at least a percentage of the attendees. And that's maybe just offer some generic international travel tips. I had a much better time this year than last year because of some very hard lessons I learned about equipment that it's a good idea to have with you last year because I didn't have it last year. So an international capable hotspot as well as power adapters, uh, a power bank is a great idea, not just like whatever little cheap random crap, like something good. I don't know if y'all are aware, you can buy power banks that can recharge your whole phone in an hour, like as fast as you can plug it into the wall. Okay. And ones that'll recharge your laptop in 30 minutes. There are some great ones out there. Can you actually check that as a, can you have that in your cabin luggage? In my carry-on, yes. Yep. And in my carry-on as well, my power bank can recharge my phone five and a half times over. And because I also got a new charger, I can charge that entire power bank in less than an hour from dead flat to full. This episode is brought to you by Jim's Power Bank. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to add, I wanted to answer the question earlier about Riga. Uh, I noticed something that is, it has nothing to do with the conference. I just noticed it. If you're walking on the street, the cars will purposefully stop for you and wait for you to go. That doesn't happen in, in America. <laughs> I've, I've also noticed that. It almost became a, a conflict of the two people being ultra polite. Yeah, you're trying to let them go and, you, and like, they no, don't want no, you. To, no, no, you, yeah. sir. No, after you, sir. No, after you, sir. <laughs> I Maybe, yeah. Is it is it a, a local... So there could be two things. Most of the most of the crossroads have got these traffic signs that, uh, that look like give way to pedestrians. And that's possible that there is like absolute pedestrian uh, right of way. I've I've noticed that the, I've just been uh, obeying the the like the traffic lights. So if it's been red for yeah, me, yeah, exactly, just, me too. But it, it happens even when there's not an actual signal. Like there's certain cross sections. If you just start walking, they will they will slow down, and sometimes they'll slow down before you even get to the curb because they see you coming. Especially if it's a group, but if it's even one person that they do it, so that's nice. I've noticed something here as well that that is a bit jarring when you come from Dublin. Um, it's like people will wait at the if there's a, a don't walk light, like the the red man on the on the light. People oh, yeah. will actually stand there and wait, even if there's like not a car in sight. Yeah, uh, like, yeah. 
in Dublin, pe- like people just completely ignore those things. Like <laughs> they'll just like run across the road and right in front of a speeding car and just jaywalking left, right, and center. Oh yeah, like no, people are just pol- politely. Those, those waiting. lights are just a formality in Dublin. Like. There are lights in Dublin? <laughs> <laughs> no, the traffic lights for the cars, yeah, people obey those. No, I know about those, but it doesn't help that in Dublin pedestrian lights have got a yellow light as well. I think that's really cool, though. I like that. Everyone says that's weird, but I actually, you know, because, you know, I don't want to be kept in suspense. Some of the, the, one, the pedestrian crossings do have a countdown here as well. Yeah. The, the countdowns are fantastic. In the U.S., there are, like, buttons underneath the crosswalks that you can press, but nine times out of ten, they're placebos. They literally do nothing. <laughs> While here, rather than giving you a placebo and making you think you're doing something, they give you a countdown. So you know, okay, I just have to wait 30 seconds. I can be patient. I can wait 30 seconds. It's okay. They have that in Dublin, too, but not on every every set of lights so they only have them on some and not others for some reason but uh but yeah so um and that perfectly encapsulates my my earlier point we we started off as a linux podcast and now we're talking about traffic lights in different cities (laughs) so that's just the kind like that's these kind of conferences all over (laughs) Uh, jim just said they probably run linux (laughs) because he doesn't have a microphone so i think we're almost i know i know I know, but uh, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> uh, we're uh, we're almost at time, so maybe we'll take one or one or two more questions and then wrap it up. Well, so the question I just wanted to ma- let you guys know: if you go across a park where they have the three stars, and then like wait for a tramway to come, the tramway will stop for you to cross the street. There's no sign, no nothing. <laughs> I mean, tram. <laughs> how good is that, right? That is unusual, yeah. That would never happen in Dublin. They'll ram you to a side. <laughs> oh, they'd ram you on. You they ram dead, you yes. on purpose, just just for entertainment. <laughs> you'd be you'd be the sign on the top of the Lewis. And also, it's actually, it happened uh, once or twice, hasn't it? Yeah. Also, <laughs> also in Dublin, you get uh, like there's a when you press the button or like there's a countdown buzzer. It's almost like techno music. So like you you press the button and you'd be waiting there going. Unts, 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 yeah, so many people have actually sampled that sound <laughs> for real. Like yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just the, the the little beep 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 thing that goes off on the on the lights. Anyway, we're back to lights again. Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, if we've do we have any final remarks? Um, I think we're almost at time. Any final questions? Anybody wants to say anything? Anybody has anything else to say? <laughs> Yes, I want to give a final comment. It is very, very important when you go to a conference that you bring the, your good winter equipment because we are already in November. And it can happen that it snows. And I'm only, he has done it really, really well. He has bought a pair of flip flop with spikes in <laughs> case that it gets icy. <laughs> Yeah, that is yeah. pretty inspired. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> we should all learn from Amulet. So these flip flops, they're, they're s- each flop or whatever has two pieces of tread velcroed to the bottom. You can rip those two pieces of tread off and replace them with pieces that have more tread, less tread, pieces that are like grippy for underwater use, or ones that have spikes. They're meant for fishing. No one said I couldn't use them for the snow or ice. <laughs> but hold on, that's, that's a bit like putting snow chains on a, on a beach buggy, to be honest. <laughs> Does it say, as seen on TV, wish.com or Timu, anywhere on those sandals? <laughs> it says none of those. <laughs> so, so you, again, couldn't sleep at your, and was switching through the shopping channels. Yeah? Like, oh my God, this is fantastic. I'm going to have to call him right now. <laughs> No, I, I thought, this thing has to exist. Let me look for it. And oh, I right. Spent, okay, that's different. I spent like a day <laughs> looking around, and I found one manufacturer. So it's like the, it's the, it's so like the, the fry uh, meme, shut up and take my money. <laughs> yes. So, so let me get this straight. The, the spikes are Velcroed to the soles of your shoes. So no. if, the, if you get stuck in ice... The spice will stay. You trip over. You, the Velcro disconnects. You strip over and up in your nose. No, the spikes are... He's going to show us the spikes. It's load-bearing Velcro. <laughs> wow. Do what? It's load-bearing Velcro. Yes, it is. 
So you can just rip off the pieces like this, and the spikes are permanently attached to the tread. It's the tread that Velcros to the rest of the shoe. Okay. So it's We're a big chunk for the benefit of the audio listeners. Okay, enough about the sandals. We're on time. <laughs> um, now, now for the very uh, boring podcast part. So our socials are... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Up, so up, it's up, up there, and it's uh, show. Well, so that's you, our main website. It's okay, that's my job. <laughs> 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 it's like, <laughs> it's like uh, yeah. So go to linuxlads.com, which is up on the screen, um, and you can go to linuxlads.com forward slash contact. Uh, you can email us on show at linuxlads. Uh, and you can get us mainly on Telegram. We have a Telegram group. Uh, we have a bunch of different things. We have a forum as well. Forum.linuxlads.com. Um, so yeah, all, it's all listed on the website. You'll find it all there. Um, best place to get in touch with us though is directly on our Mastodon handles as well. So we're all pretty active there. So uh, yeah, uh, we've been the Linux lads and thank you all so much for coming. And, uh, and thank you for Canonical for such a great event. Yeah, massive thanks to Canonical as well. Absolutely, yeah. let me echo that. Yeah, and thanks, thanks to everyone. Uh, Thank you to my to my mom to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting any Oscars. So it's over. It's, oh, o- it's over now. Not yet. That's coming. Goodbye. <laughs>